folks, Johnny here, Tennessee Mountain Bees. We've had a little skiff of snow. I thought it'd be a good day to get out and look around in the woods and see how close the red maples are to blooming. Behind me here is a monster red maple. Let me turn the camera around here. You can see a lot of buds up there. It won't be long, it'll be blooming out. I measured the circumference of this tree at chest height and it was 79 and a half inches which puts the diameter at about 25.3 inches. Multiplying that by the growth factor of 4.5 for red maple, that puts this tree at about around 113 years old estimated, which I thought was, was really cool. And you can see here, there's a, there's a younger one that, that grew up right beside it. And it's just like becoming part of the same tree now, it looks like. But anyway, it's, it's got, it's got some rotten spots in it, but still seems to be very healthy from the look of the number of buds. There's a squirrel nest up there. I wanted to wanted to share some some video footage of this tree with y'all. Something that's been on my mind for a while is to do a series of videos on tree identification. My grandfather and my father taught me a lot about trees. We burned. Uh, Burned firewood when I was a kid, and so it was always important to know which trees gave you quality firewood. Also, too, as far as hunting, deer hunting, squirrel hunting, you know, certain tree species attract wildlife better than others. And so that gives you an edge on that. Also, too, for hunting morel mushrooms, all sorts of things, it's, it's really good to know the different trees. I was always amazed at how my, my dad and my grandfather knew the names of the trees. You know, I, I majored in geology in college, and I minored in plant and soil science, so I took took dendrology as one of my minor courses. And uh, so my grandfather and I then would uh, would argue about the tree names. That's not a that's not a red maple boy. That's a soft maple. But as y'all may know, those those terms are used interchangeably. There's a lot of nicknames for red maple. Swamp maple is another one. Scarlet maple. It's a very important source, early source of pollen and nectar for honeybees. And uh, if if it were if it bloomed a little later in the year, we'd probably see a, a huge supply of nectar from it. But it comes so early, the bees typically aren't strong enough to take full advantage. Uh, however, however, again, it's a it's a great source for early pollen. It provides a grayish green pollen, and uh, and and also a nectar source. Both both male and female flowers provide nectar, and of course the uh, male flowers provide the pollen. Yeah, I've had a fondness for trees since I was a young boy. Uh, and not in the uh, tree hugger urban dictionary sense, but more in uh, how it's such a valuable resource for us. And, and I was just very pleased to learn how valuable a resource the trees are for, uh, for honeybees. It was a paradigm shift for me when I got into beekeeping. You know, my thought was wildflowers, clover, you know, stuff like that. And I was so amazed to find out that uh, that, that one basswood tree will provide as much nectar as a half acre of, uh, of white clover. So, pretty interesting. It's, it's a lot easier to plant a basswood tree than it is to plant a half acre of white clover. So, I wanted to uh, just get out in the woods a little bit and share some footage out here. I'm also gonna put together a, a PowerPoint presentation with some different pictures of red maple leaves and buds and the female flowers the male flowers and uh and so we'll get back with you later on hey folks as promised we're going to do a little bit deeper dive into the red maple tree acer rubrum there are about 200 or so maple trees in the acer genus and uh red maple is acer rubrum rubrum being latin for red you can see here in a couple slides on the title screen uh, the, the beautiful fall red color and also the red color of the, of the uh, blooms are, are a couple of the reasons why this is known as red maple. Red maple is the most common tree in the eastern United States. It's uh, highly adaptable. It can thrive in the widest range of soil types, textures, moisture, pH, and elevation. It has several common names, soft maple probably being the most common nickname. Scarlet maple, swamp maple, or a couple more. 
the red maple tree reaches maturity in 70 to 80 years, and it seldom lives longer than 150 years. It's a very important source of pollen and nectar for honeybees, and that's why it's the, the first tree that I've included in the, what I hope to be a series of tree identification uh, videos uh, in the context of beekeeping. You can see uh, here in this slide showing the uh, diversity of, of various tree species in Tennessee. The red maple is by far the champion. Uh, estimated 750 million trees in the state of Tennessee. Now, you, I think you'll find similar charts in a lot of the states in the in the eastern U.S. Uh, as a matter of fact, the red maple is the state tree of Rhode Island. The next closest competitor here in, in the state of Tennessee to red maple is black gum at an estimated 450, millions, 450 million trees, uh, closely followed by yellow poplar at a little over 400 million, which is another tree that, uh, that, we'll, in, that uh, we'll be doing a video on in the future for, for identi identification. The range of the red maple tree and how extensive it is. You know, the red maple is not considered very valuable for forestry for a variety of reasons, one being the poor growth form in a lot of cases, but the beautiful fall coloring makes it a favorite for urban plantings. You know, it's lucky for us in, in our NRB's early season, early season success to have this uh, uh, early pollen and early nectar source. You know, and I, I, I really love looking at some of the old literature, particularly when you can download it for free. This is uh, American Honey Plants is one of the classic books written by uh, Frank Chapman Pellet in 1920. And you can see here he he lived from 1879 to 1951. And uh, I will include a link to where you can download a free copy of this. Uh, it's this book and many others are in public domain. But I wanted to share just a uh, section from uh, regarding the red maple here. It says the blossoms come very early when especially valuable in building up colonies for the main honey flow. If the bees were as numerous as later, the nectar stored from multiple blossoms would make a creditable yield. Mr. C.L. Penny of Iowa reports that one year his scale hive showed a gain from one to two pounds daily from soft maple when the ground was still covered with snow. If it were possible to have colonies come through the winter with as many bees as they have at the beginning of the winter, beekeeping would be a bonanza. Instead of having one or two flows, there would be a first flow from maple and willow, followed by one from dandelion and fruit bloom ahead of the big clover flow. However, the beekeeper whose apiary is situated near plenty of such trees as willow, maple, elm, and box elder is fortunate indeed for the bees get a splendid stimulation very early and should be in prime condition for business when clover comes on. I just, I thought that was an amazing uh, description of the value of red maple. And I thought it was so cool how Mr. C.L. Penny noticed such a, a gain in his hives when there was uh, still snow on the ground. Very interesting. Here is a, a screenshot of a Strathcona Beekeepers Library. I will include a link to this in the description of this video. This is just such an, an amazing wealth of free information. Lots of books, uh, videos, just you, you can get lost in here, folks. So if you, if, you, if you haven't had an opportunity to check out Strathcona, do yourself a favor and check, check it out. Okay, here's a, here are the, uh, a couple slides of the red maple flowers. The red maple, again, it's one of the earliest trees to flower in the spring. These, these flowers are beautiful. They kind of remind me of something you might see in, in tropical area of the, of the world. The, uh, the, the red maple tree is, I say mostly dioecious because most of the trees either will have male flowers or female flowers. However, there are a few that will have both. So the species is technically polygamodiaceous, but I say mostly dioecious because generally it's, it's going to be either or. The pollen and again, the nectar from this tree, it's, it's a valuable resource for, for honeybees and their keepers. Red maple is a deciduous tree. The leaves are oppositely arranged on the twig 
as you can see here in this slide, the, uh, the leaves come off of the stem uh, across uh, adjacent to each other as opposed to staggered, which would be alternately arranged, but these are oppositely arranged. They're, the red maple leaves are relatively small as, as, as compared to other maples. Some people say you can get it confused with silver maple, but I disagree with that. The silver maple leaves are much larger and have uh, deeper sinuses. The red maple leaves are typically have three lobes. The under, underside of the leaves are a lighter shade of green, where the underside of silver maple leaves are more silver looking. Uh, browse is reported to be toxic to horses and cattle from these leaves. So that's something to be aware of if you have horses and cattle and they can, uh, they can eat these leaves, especially during uh, dry times. Uh, all maple trees have Samaras uh, as their, you know, for their seed. And uh, the, uh, the red maple has one of the smallest Samaras, about three quarters of an inch. The, the wings are slightly divergent. The red maple produces a bunch of seeds. It'll typically have a bumper crop in alternate years. Uh, it's wind dispersed and germinate quickly. And an interesting fact about uh, about red maple, uh, a tree 12 inches in diameter reportedly can produce almost a million seeds. Red maple is absolutely awesome uh, <clears throat> for beekeepers, for for urban landscape, you know, for, for beautiful fall colors. And so keep red maple in mind if you're looking for trees to plant. There are several other beneficials as well. And I hope y'all enjoyed this. And please leave some comments if you have any suggestions on how I could uh, improve a video series on tree identification for beekeepers, for particularly beginning beekeepers or anybody that's interested in, in tree identification and uh, pollinator friendly trees. I would appreciate your feedback. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so and uh, like, comment and, uh, and share. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day and God bless you and your family and your bees.